So we've got it. So uh, Cornelia, any word from you? Yes, of course. So as Pavel mentioned, my name is Cornelia. I'm a technical support engineer. Uh, since I've been working in Fibara, I have requested, I have received many requests from the clients uh, whether some devices are compatible with Fibaro. Um, it was, of course, we as a support team with uh, cooperating with other departments, with engineers, with uh, programmers from Fibaro, we're looking for some solutions to uh, make incompatible devices compatible. So we have some virtual devices, we have some quick apps, we have some uh, net dot uh, TCP socket, for example, the class uh, and quick apps, uh, which make some devices compatible with us using the TCP IP protocol. Um, but for example, we couldn't connect the device, the, the wired device with uh, Fibaro gateway. Um, so Ulink gives us this possibility to, uh, to connect those wired device. It is certificated product, it is um, it is tested by our QAs, so we can ensure you that it's a very reliable and solid product. Uh, and what's more, I think the the most um, friendly part of it is the interface, which is uh, inspired by the Home Center 2 uh, graphical user interface. Uh, what about probably Mr. Machi will mention? Um, and it's something what can make us more friendly, user friendly. The interface makes us feeling more um, comfortable because we know this from the Home Center too. Uh, I think that the device, which uh, Ulink is, uh, as a protocol translator, is very needed for Fibaro. Uh, that let us uh, control much more devices that wrote in the list of the compatible devices. So I think that's awesome we can cooperate together. And I'm very glad that I'm here with you. Thank you. And that was Cornelia. So as you can see, we have people in the support team, not only bots. Uh, so now, uh, without further ado, I, will, I would like to give uh, the screen to Mr. Maciej, who will present the larger part of this presentation. And now, Mr. Maciej, you can launch it. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Maciej Skrzyczyński. I represent uh, Utonomy um, as a, a chief technical officer and also as a constructor of the Ulink device. So you can ask me all uh, questions about the device. Uh, today's um, presentation uh, has been prepared by uh, Wojciech Gruszka, who is the architect of our uh, software, all the software contained in Ulink device, and for me. Uh, and uh, I would like to show you the uh, agenda of today's uh, meeting. I would like to um, provide, provide you with a description of the gateway itself. Uh, it is not intended as a full technical training, but we will go through some basic steps of configuration because it is, I can call self-explanatory when you see it in action. Uh, I will tell uh, something about the communication with the infrastructure devices. On the other hand, with Fibaro, Home Center, um, uh, Gateways, and uh, I will mention about uh, tool to, to uh, uh, broaden our list of compatible devices, which we uh, called create, uh, creating templates for, for the device. Mm, and at the end of the meeting, I will mention about our cloud services. It is called uCloud. And I will invite you to our uh, forum uh, uh, where you can always ask uh, questions regarding Ulink, not only Ulink, but mine, uh, it is a place for Ulink discussion. And then we uh, hope that uh, the questions and answers session will finalize our today's meeting. <clears throat> so let me uh, let me describe in details the the uh, role and and idea of the product. Uh, I would like to split it to the to the three uh, chapters: role and functions of the gateway, the genesis of the product. It will uh, 
uh, answer some of your questions and then uh, we can talk about device architecture. So let's start with the uh, functions. Um, there are many devices and please look at the, the uh, today modern houses from our point of view. For us, you have already seen probably that slide. I will repeat for those who were absent uh, a week ago on a general um, meeting. Uh, we look at the uh, buildings or the houses in a special special way. Uh, not only the standard furniture, uh, we see also the uh, infrastructure device like uh, conditioners like uh, photovoltaics uh, solar cells weather stations um, and what is hidden uh, underground uh, some serious devices like uh, ventilation uh, recuperation uh, devices heat pumps uh, boilers or uh, domestic hot water tanks, uh, external heat pump, all those devices are, some of them or in, in different constellations are available in all modern uh, today buildings and uh, uh, the end user would like to have a tool, preferably single tool like Fibaro application on their smartphone to, to control all the building, not only the lights, not only the multimedia, but, but uh, every particular dev device which is important in the house. This is why uh, we connect all those devices with a cable. Most of them are, uh, most of them use uh, wired uh, communication, not wireless, not, not yet at the moment. So we, we can connect the cable bus and uh, we can install a Ulink gateway somewhere in your switchboard and connect it to Fibara Home Center, which should give you the whole uh, control of the building if it is a house for normal people, but not only. We, we were talking about uh, uh, DALI lighting. Uh, this is a technology which is uh, available not only in uh, residences, but also in large offices. Uh, now it is uh, possible to control it with the um, Fibera Home Center. In the warehouses, large industrial plants, um, you can say that it is too large for Z-Wave uh, transmission, but uh, those wired cabling technologies uh, extend the range to to hundreds of meters to kilometers from the central point. So it is not a problem. Uh, and in a shopping mall, we have already some interesting um, installations in a, in a shopping, shopping malls with the DALI luminaires and with the Ulink and, and Fibaro home center. So this is new market for all of you and uh, the huge market. So, uh, so we are glad that you have the tool now. Uh, let me describe why Ulink is mm, the, the revolutionary solution for, for such um, installations. It is a constant problem because uh, there are many devices, many, many manufacturers, <laughs> they build new products every month and uh, integration with all of them uh, normally require large uh, programming work. So we have to employ hundreds of programmers and we, we this is the race which is impossible to win. They will always uh, introduce new products and we will be um, weeks or months uh, late for, for, for this uh, integration. So um, the number of protocols when I started my my uh, work as a system in integrator you know, a long time ago, um, I was disappointed by the large number of protocols, incompatible protocols, uh, plethora of standards. The standard should be one, 
if it is hundreds of standards, it is, none of them uh, can be called uh, standards, seriously. Uh, but after 30 years of integrating different systems, I can tell you that there are, uh, there are enough uh, similarities between those uh, communications protocols and interfaces to build uh, one universal modem if you know where to split the responsibility between the constant algorithm and something which can be easily changed. Let me show you uh, the diagram. It looks maybe it looks complicated at the at the beginning, so so I will explain. Let Let's look at the source of information in normal uh, house. You have the many uh, infrastructure devices, for example, air conditioners, heating source, weather stations, ventilation, and you would like to um, to see what happened with those uh, devices and uh, and to control them. So you need a bidirectional communication with those devices. We call them infrastructure devices. More or less, uh, every modern house is equipped with, with su such kind of infrastructure devices and we would like to have them on our at the right side i hope that you, you can see my cursor which i used to show what i'm talking about so um, uh, we would like to have the interface on our smartphones computers tablets or to control those infrastructure devices from scenes as simple as fibro or block scenes, for example, which is very, very important for me. And how, how can we do this? How we can pass the information from the infrastructure devices to the fibro system? Uh, every device is manufactured by different uh, manufacturer, different, use a different protocol, different interfaces. So uh, what we uh, prepared, we have built some programming uh, tools we call this uh, transceivers and for every particular um, important so uh, protocol we started with the most important protocols like modbus like dali like tcp um, we we have the programmer module which is responsible for communication with this uh, with the devices using this particular uh, uh, device so uh, when this piece of software translated uh, to the center of your link, it does not uh, depend on what uh, device was the source of the information. We have numbers or, or, or uh, strings, so it is uh, unified from the point of, point of view of the internal uh, your link structure. Of course, sometimes we have to do some calculations. For example, the weather station provides the um, temperature in uh, Celsius degrees, and the air conditioner needs uh, inf information in in Fahrenheit. So sometimes we have to do calculations. Maybe we have to uh, divide it by thousand to have the kilowatts instead of watts, something like that. So <clears throat> uh, we define those uh, transformations, and we have data ready to output to. Uh, some of the controller, uh, this is another piece of software, which talks to Fibaro home center uh, and uh, provides you with the information in the, uh, in the same uh, form, regardless of what uh, device were the source of the information. Mm, uh, and uh, this is job for different group of specialists. The red uh, squares, it is job for our programmers and it is already done. We also prepared all the controllers talking to Fibara Home Center uh, because it is unified and it is constant. What is changing? The device specification. And what we have done, uh, we prepared, uh, we called it template editor, a graphical template editor, which can be used by many of you to create your own set of communication parameters, calculations, conversions, appropriate for the device you have installed in your your customer premise. So uh, we give you a tools 
to use and to create uh, communication path for every device. Uh, it, we only request that the, the device is, a, is equipped with some form of communication with the external world. Uh, most of them today are ready to, to, to communicate with one another. And there's the last uh, part, which is um, uh, installer job, because uh, the template, this is what we call the template. It is a general um, recipe for for um, particular device. And the installer have to implement the template, have to create so-called so instance of this device in the uh, in a particular installation because you can have for example one template for uh, one type of air conditioners and in your customer premises there are five such uh, air conditioners installed uh, they uh, are installed in different room rooms uh, they are they have have been given a uh, unique uh, address, which we call, for example, for, for Modbus protocol, it is called uh, slave ID, and every air conditioner should have a different unique uh, slave ID. So the installer takes the template and uses it to create five in identical instances uh, different only with a slave ID for each particular air conditioner. Mm, and this is the job for installer. And some of you uh, may use the template editor, similar as we do, to create your own templates. And I will show you uh, in a couple of minutes uh, how easy it can be. So um, we also publish the list of uh, infrastructure devices which are already supported. Um, we are moving our uh, older database to the new ones. So every day um, the list uh, is extended by, by several new positions. Uh, we have about 30, 40 uh, ready to use uh, um, Templates, you will see it in a, in a couple of days on on a, on the server. Uh, but of course, uh, every week uh, some new devices are created by us. We hope that also by by you in a in a short future. So uh, let's talk about the um, architecture of Ulink itself. Uh, we need um, a short introduction to. Uh, the most important uh, protocols used by many uh, infrastructure devices manufacturers, I mean uh, uh, Modbus or DALI Lighting. Uh, our today's meeting is, is not intended to be a, a Modbus training, but I have to tell you uh, some ba ba background information uh, that let us uh, understand the Ulink functionality. Uh, so, um, the diagram of the, we have two basic uh, form of Modbus protocol. Uh, one is Modbus TCP and it does not require, um, does not require schematic diagrams because you, you simply connect your device to the TCP IP network, local area network. Um, your link is also connected to the LAN, so they communicate, communicate as all normal uh, today's uh, network ready devices. Uh, in case of Modbus RTU uh, protocol, the serial line is used. In, in a hardware layer, it is RS485. Industrial standard uh, is a very uh, good way of communication with the industry uh, for last 40, even more than 40 years because it is resistant to interferences, uh, maybe not so fast, but can be very long, up to a kilometer or so. Uh, and you can connect uh, up to 32 devices uh, to that uh, bus, where uh, all those devices are uh, slaves. They are uh, listening to the information to the comments to the to the queries sent 
along the uh, Morvas, and uh, there should be one master per every such a bus, and Uring plays a role of Modbus master for all those devices. Those devices uh, have to be uh, set uh, to assigned a unique slave ID. Uh, the, this is the number between one and 247. Uh, so the other space is even larger than the number of uh, device, devices uh, that can be connected. Mm, the wires can be twisted, it always help, helps. Mm, and uh, what is important, at the beginning and the end of the bust, there must be mm, terminating resistors, 120 ohms. Uh, sometimes they are mm, installed inside the device by the manufacturer. If not, you have to add the simple small resistor at the end of the line. Mm, U-Link also can be one, can be first or the last in the chain. So it, al it also has uh, the term terminating resistor, but it is switched by the software mm, uh, when you configure U-Link. Um, Maybe a small suggestion. Uh, if, uh, I use an example with the air conditioners. If the air conditioner specialist um, completes their work, you should see uh, several uh, indoor units. They are probably uh, connected to, to one main um, central uh, outdoor unit with a compressor. And uh, you, you have to ask those specialists to address every device because mm, normally it is not necessary to air conditioners to work with the, in the outdoor unit, but uh, it is mm, necessary for communication. So they have to use tools provided by mm, air conditioner manufacturer to set the uh, unique address per, for every installed split every installed indoor unit and give you a list they should give you a list of the rooms and appropriate uh, slave id numbers um, uh, to let you assign the proper uh, air conditioning you need to the pro to the appropriate uh, room uh, during your installations uh, so please remember to, you have to cooperate with them uh, Sometimes that configuration, that address is changed by the software. Uh, sometimes it is a matter of display and 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 uh, small keyboards on the on the air conditioning device. Sometimes simple deep switches, so they know the way how to give the unique addresses. And um, all the devices connected to one single uh, serial bus. Uh, must match the configuration parameters like um, transmission speed, parity, or something like that. Um, all of them must be configured in the same way. Uh, if we mix the devices with a different uh, configuration, the remaining devices may um, understand the exchange in for improperly. So it is. Uh, it is not a better. It is a must to have all the devices in the same configuration. What if uh, some of them uh, have the parameters um, out of the range of the uh, rest? We can uh, add the, another interface to your link. We can add the USB to RS uh, 485 converter. It costs about five euro and is widely available. And uh, we have four USB ports in Ulink, so we have added four different uh, buses with a different configuration communication parameters. And uh, together with, with the uh, first mm, uh, bus, which is built in the Ulink gateway, we can have up to five uh, buses. It is quite large, it is five mm, multiplied by 32. In, in the most uh, complicated installations, uh, I found not no more than 20 different 
mobile devices, so it is uh, absolutely enough. When we talk about daily communication, it is also important and very popular. Mm, if you can look at the diagram, you will see the uh, sources of light. It can be uh, LED, it can be standard uh, light, all of them uh, needs energy. Uh, the energy is uh, supplied by the standard power line to the electronic device, which is mainly rectifier, and it lowers the voltage uh, to, to pass the energy to the source of light. But this electronic devices called DALI power supplies, it is not precise uh, term, uh, because uh, the devices also can read the information sent by the DALI bus. Commands like turn on light, turn off, set the dimming level to several percent. This is an example of DALI commands exchange within the DALI bus. Mm, and uh, every particular mm, uh, source of light uh, has a DALI address between in the range between 1 and uh, 63. So you can have 64 DALI luminaries on a single bus. And uh, the bus, the, the, the DALI installation must be up and running. It must be properly configured and checked before we can connect it to the FIBAR world. Uh, how we can do this? We can connect the uh, programmer or, or installers PC with the uh, USB converter to the DALI bus, and it will scan and let you address every uh, source of light, every DALI luminar found, and uh, equip it with a unique DALI addresses. And you can check, you can test it. If it is ready, uh, you are ready to connect the DALI uh, port of the U-Link. It is connected with a short 20 centimeters strip, and you can connect up to four such uh, such a ports to, to one single U-Link gateway. Uh, please um, notice that there is also a DALI bus power supply. It is the bus which should not be... Uh, the, the, the name uh, DALI power supply is sometimes overused because mm, it, it is not only the device uh, powering the source of light. The bus, DALI bus itself, needs a um, power supply and it is specialized low power uh, DALI device. Sometimes it is even mm, embedded in a programmer, but you need it, you need it uh, installed somewhere in your insta in installation. The DALI bus must have the DALI bus power supply. It is 18 volts, so uh, low power. So uh, simple devices necessary. Uh, if um, there are more um, DALI buses, uh, DALI uh, installation, you can connect uh, in a daisy chain in the cascade uh, up to four DALI link ports to one U link gateway. We only ask you to change the uh, DALI address, the, uh, the uh, interface address, the port address. Uh, you have the four uh, addresses to choose from and every uh, DALI port can be connected to different uh, DALI bus. So uh, you can control four times six, uh, 64, 256 uh, DALI luminaires from one single U-Link and uh, Fibara. <clears throat> uh, if we talk about different ports, different communications, please look at the uh, block a schematic of uh, of uh, internal healing structure. Uh, uh, we have exposed all uh, necessary communication ports and interfaces uh, on the U-Links uh, enclosure. So we have 
uh, LAN ports, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB, uh, one wire, uh, inter-integrated circuit, SPI, and of course, serial ports. This is most often useful. Uh, so um, even now we can connect many different devices and we have the open path to extend the Euling capabilities in the future. It is based on the uh, Linux operating system. So we have all the programming libraries for all protocols and we can expand. We started with the most important like Modbus, like like DALI, but it is not, not the end. So this is basically, this is what you have to know uh, to discuss about capabilities of your link device. Uh, talk about the integration between Ulink and infrastructure devices, but please take into account that not all infrastructure devices are equipped with internal communication ports. Why? Uh, there are many protocols and there are many interfaces, so it would be difficult, it would be strange if the manufacturer of, for example, air conditioner would equip uh, its device with uh, several different communication ports where only one of them will be used in a particular installation, if any. So uh, many manufacturers uh, uh, offer a choice of uh, communication ports and uh, you must decide what, which one you have to need to buy. And this is the place where you have to cooperate with designers of air condition system or heating or, or any other infrastructure, piece of in, uh, in building infrastructure to discuss with them, to ask them uh, to order and uh, deliver the appropriate uh, communication port and installed it inside the infrastructure device uh, to make it able to communicate uh, with the external world. You have, you have to precise that you need, for example, Modbus port. If you uh, not precise the information, they will probably deliver it with a KNX port because this is KNX is the only uh, home smart home system they have ever had. So it is dangerous. You have to be precise in, in this this uh, dialogue with the uh, specialist. Okay, so um, this is the background. background. Uh, uh, what Euling do? What is his its role? And I would like to show you some some configuration details, uh, which will let you better understand uh, how to use and what is in fact what what is uh, uh, role and uh, functionality of of the Euling. Uh, I've grouped some. Uh, some items on our list uh, because we are trying to um, uh, to feed the two hours uh, time. Uh, so we'll talk about the installation uh, in using the, the operating basic elements and connecting Euling to the local area networks. So this is how Euling looks like. Uh, yes, it has a, a power supply on the uh, detachable uh, screw terminals. Uh, it has some, the, the red sockets are communication uh, ports uh, for different technologies. For example, that port is used to connect DALI uh, modules. Uh, this is a place where you uh, can see the micro SD uh, primary card with the, with the primary file system. And uh, the window lets you uh, exchange the card, uh, even if your uh, link is mounted, because it is mounted in, uh, on a DIN rail. Sometimes, if in the place which is difficult to access, so this is the Windows uh, Four. Uh, we have the all LED display. Why not LCD? Uh, again, it is. It can be installed in different places, and uh, you will see the display. Uh, you will look at the display from the different angles. Uh, LCD sometimes is unreadable. All LED is always readable, so it is 
we hope that it is helpful. Um, we, you support the, uh, you, you control the display using two simple uh, push buttons. So um, it is the old keyboard offered by by your link. Uh, you have the, some diagnostic LEDs, for example, as a green uh, five volts. Uh, uh, LED. Uh, if you connect the power, you, if you close the uh, circuit breaker, that green LED should uh, lead. If it does not lead, you have the problem with uh, with the uh, power uh, with uh, supplying the uh, U-link or U-link itself. Maybe fuse internal fuse. It has a two amps fuse in, in, under the cover. Uh, there is uh, doubled. Uh, single port single rs485 uh, port with double screw terminals because it is sometimes in the middle of the chain chain and uh, i don't want you to to connect two wires in, in single um, screw terminal you have transmit and receive uh, leds for usb port internet port so basically uh, it is all mystery um, behind the Ewing construction. If you uh, need to connect the DALI port, you use uh, the short strip, um, which will you will find in a box. You connect this uh, red plug to the Ewing port. You have to use both dip switches to set the um, unique uh, address. Uh, there are also some diagnostic LEDs, LEDs inside. One of them is uh, the, the protocol address. It is a RGB LED. So if you have more than one um, uh, DALI port, uh, each of them should light with a different color uh, if you address them uh, uniquely properly. And uh, th uh, this is the uh, socket where you uh, put the DALI bus wires. If you need to remove them, you have to push the release uh, parts inside the, the that window. So, okay, uh, using the OLED menu screen, <clears throat> you only needs about a minute to start after powering up, and after another couple of seconds, you will you should see the uh, main menu. A main menu on the uh, all, all LED screen, and uh, in, you can navigate uh, using two simple buttons. The role of those buttons constantly changes, but it is indicated with the uh, uh, with this left uh, and right bottom uh, writings uh, describes the current function of the. Uh, button. So, if you press now, if you press uh, several times down, down, you will see that the cursor is going down the list. Uh, list is never long; it is only a few items, and it is looped. So, um, if you uh, navigate to a seven, eight, nine, the next pressing bring you to the first. Uh, loop position, which is network status. If you are interested in, you simply press select to enter the menu. This is the full list of the main menu uh, of that of that OLED display. Uh, when you enter network status, this is what we mm, do most often. You will see the uh, IP address assigned to the Euling gateway. Uh, you will use it to uh, in your browser to connect to the web page, uh, administrative web page generated by the, by the Ulink. But you, you can also see the uh, Wi-Fi interface IP if it is up. And if your Ulink is connected to the internet uh, or your network is connected to the interface, in the internet you will also see the external IP address uh, from your uh, provider. Mm, uh, another screen you link in for you will find serial number, firmware and hardware revision and information about uptime. The, that U-Link was started on 8th of October. 
you can update the software your link will dis display the uh, current firmware version and the uh, version available on the server uh, if you need uh, our remote assistance you can enter the ssh uh, tunnel should double them uh, diagnostic tunnel uh, if you confirm uh, your link opens the connection to our server the encrypted connection and if you uh, provide us with the session id we can remotely connect to this device and check the configuration maybe correct something uh, to help you uh, if you have no wired uh, connection to the network and uh, to the local area network in the house you can uh, connect your link with the Wi-Fi, with the wi wireless communication, if it is available. Uh, but it is difficult to, pro to provide the name of the network and the password, which may be long. So what you should do? You can start uh, Access Point Wizard. Uh, the new link will start its own local access, access point with the name of the network. You can see the name of the network and if you take the name and provide that password you your your computer or your smartphone should be connected to uh, that access point and you can use this ip address to open the administrative page then you can scan all available wi-fi networks choose the one you are interested in uh, select and give it a password and your link will automatically connect to that wireless network. Uh, you can also reset networks, network parameters to bring it to, to a standard DHCP dynamic addressing. You can provide factor reset, but be careful. You will lose all your, all your um, configuration, all devices uh, entered in the Ulink communication, all will be lost. So you use it as a as a last resort uh, very rarely and of course you can reboot your link and you can stop your link if you plan to uh, turn the power down it, it is a safe solution but of course uh, your link should survive even if it did this um, unexpected uh, power leakage for, for example so this is uh, all you need to uh, safely operate the uh, all led display uh, if you know the ip address uh, which is assigned to your link you can open your browser and you can uh, you can connect to the uh, Ulink administrative page. Uh, at a glance, you can see that it is uh, similar to the philosophy of the Home Center 2. Uh, home, rooms, devices, settings, help. So um, uh, basically, um, all you know about home centers or all your um, navigating skills uh, should be helpful uh, in operating your uh, link uh, gateway. Um, we will return to this uh, to, to this screen in the future, in a short future. So uh, let me uh, discuss some basic configuration, the Y wizard and the basic your uh, configuration and the integration with Fibra home centers uh, in a short step. So uh, when you enter the IP address, that's from the Ulink uh, all LED screen, uh, your browser should, uh, should show you that login page. What if it does not respond? Mm, please check the IP address twice and the, the IP address of Ulink and the IP address of your computer because um, it is of course it is easier if you are in the same network uh, where your link uh, resides you of course it is not necessary if you have multi-segment network properly connected with the routers uh, it should also work but usually in a standard installation you will be in the same network and you should have the 
IP address from the same subnet where your link uh, works. Uh, if if not, please take a closer look to your computer, to the cables. Maybe it is uh, easy network uh, problem. If you are, uh, if you already have the uh, Ulink uh, login screen, um, Ulink tries to detect the, your uh, the language of your browser, but sometimes it fails for many reasons, and you have to manually select. Uh, at the moment, Ulink uh, speaks in fifteen uh, languages. I hope one of them is well known to you. Uh, the initial password uh, is admin, so you log into the admin admin, and uh, you should see the creator, the, the uh, wizard. Uh, simply press start and uh, go to, to six simple steps. The first of them is checking for updates. It is always good to have the newest uh, available version. Uh, again, you can decide uh, what network, local area network parameters uh, you need to, maybe static address. You can also uh, check the wireless uh, communication and then uh, choose a network from the list. And you should uh, provide the friendly name to your device uh, and it is uh, it is good to to enter your uh, email address because it is used to send um, mail communication from Ulink to us. Uh, the con adding uh, home center controllers. Uh, this is the step step that can be skipped, but. In most of cases, in, uh, usually you will install Ulink just for integrating it with the Fibers or Home Center, so you can add it even in in this uh, wizard at the, at the beginning. Um, you can add it manually, but it is much better to to let Ulink search the network. Um, in my case, uh, Ulink found free controllers. It is Home Center 2, free and UB. So you select the appropriate controller. Uh, and uh, of course, you have to provide uh, Ulink with the uh, admin password because Ulink will import many ready to use objects uh, uh, to the Fibaro Home Center and it needs uh, higher privileges. Um, if you add it, the, the controller appears uh, as an active. It's a uh, serial number software firmware version of the home, Fibra Home Center. So you click next. And uh, remember, we have to know the communication parameters of the uh, serial port, which is built in inside uh, Ulink. Uh, usually, you choose the, the, the set of parameters, which is uh, most often used by the devices you would like to connect. And that's all. So that is the basic configuration of your link. It is now ready to uh, to work. You can click uh, complete and you will be moved to the main menu. <laughs> Initially, <clears throat> it's rather empty. There are no rooms, but please don't lose your time on a waste of time on adding the rooms manually. You can download them from Home Center in a second. This is a shortcut, but uh, we'll be uh, discussing step by step. So, so let me go to the settings in a minute. Uh, there are no infrastructure devices yet. Uh, you can look at the simple diagnostics. You can see that uh, empty. Uh, link configuration means that the processor is boring. And uh, this is the place where I would stay a little longer. It is the settings, it is the configuration, basic configurations of other device. Usually we visit it once uh, during the whole Ulink life. Uh, there are several tabs. In the general tab, you can, uh, you can give a 
friendly name for the gateway. Uh, you can check the serial number. It is the same serial number presented by OED uh, displays. And uh, it is visible on a sticker on the enclosure. But if it is unreadable for some reason, you can always read the serial number from the from the link itself. Uh, there are some platform information. The uh, firmware, of course, you can uh, check it and you can upgrade it at any time. Uh, if you scroll the screen down, you will also find the uh, uh, reboot and uh, a factory uh, reset. But again, please use it with uh, care because it will uh, clean all the configuration. Uh, next tab is a backup. Uh, Uning uh, lets you create backup manually, but it also detects uh, detects changes of the configuration, uh, checks it every hour, and if it uh, detects the change of the configuration, it makes the automatic backup. Uh, you can initiate the backup manually. <clears throat> it takes a couple of seconds. You should see it on the list. You can uh, download it. You can restore it if you wish or delete um, at any time. In the users tab, uh, you can change the password. Or the, uh, you can add uh, many other users, but uh, for us it is very important that you change the um, administrative password. Otherwise, uh, remote access uh, to the Uling will be impossible. Uh, again, you can uh, change the network configuration. You can, uh, there is a place when you can, for example, add Wi-Fi. Uh, you can scan. This is the the screen uh, with the Wi-Fi networks using found in, in our environment. You select the appropriate network. You have to give a password and say if the configuration. the <laughs> Controllers, what control the home center? So, so the main role as a smart home controller. This is the term we use uh, in inside your link documentation in com and configuration. So, uh, you can see this is the um, home center free we have added at the uh, wizard at the beginning. You can always click uh, the range uh, mark to enter the communication. Uh, that you can be changed, but also you have the button to download uh, to download the list of uh, sections and rooms from uh, from the home center you attached to, and it takes uh, really less than a second to read all the list of many many uh, rooms defined in, in the home center. You have to assign every infrastructure device every conditioner, for example, to the appropriate room uh, because it will be imported to the FIBARA home center. Uh, so you link have to, has to know to which uh, room the device belongs to import it properly. So it is the quickest way to, to have the room synchronized between um, Ulink and the uh, FIBARA home center. Mm, the last tab, last configuration tab, also important, shows the physical hardware interfaces the Ulink is equipped to. Uh, the first one is the built-in, so it is always uh, present. You can even uh, enter and, and change the parameters. For example, I've changed the <coughs> parity control to from none to even because most of the devices I have connected in a lab uses the parity control. Uh, it is not so fast, uh, the communication speed, uh, 9.6 kilobits per second. This is the answer why it is so uh, so reliable. It is not so high speed. The me messages exchange are not so long sometimes. 
tens, rarely hundreds of bytes, so it is difficult to disturb. It is resistant to any interference. This is the mystery of the stability that kind of cable communication. So I save the parameters. I can also assign a friendly name because I, it is possible to have more than one uh, interface and I save it. If you um, need to add uh, another uh, serial port, um, for what reason, maybe there are too many devices on a single bus or they have uh, incompatible set of parameters. There, there's no common uh, parameters for different devices, or maybe the communication bus is too long. You can split it to, to some uh, shorter buses with a li shorter list of the devices. So then you press the add uh, another data bus. Uh, <clears throat> we widely use, uh, I can show to the camera, in my hand is a small uh, USB adapter um, uh, with a, a serial port. It costs about five uh, euros, four or five euros, and you can attach up to four such um, adapters to the U-Link. U-Link will help you identify, it will show you all connected um, USB converters, and you can choose uh, that particular one you would like to configure. You have to, you can uh, assign a name and you can assign a different set of uh, communication, serial communication parameters. You have to decide what protocol will be used uh, because the communication, communication parameters and the pro protocol must be identical for all the devices. Um, and you will see more uh, such interfaces. So uh, as far as I can, it properly there's 160 devices connected to one earring. And the last um, last important thing, I think, is the DALI bus communication. You have also add it here. Yuri will show you, show you the list. Uh, sorry, much. Uh, sorry, much. I have to do, I have to to disrupt you because we have a, a fire alarm going on here. So I'll have to leave right now. But I'll leave the uh, the the conference running. Okay. But we, me and Cornelia will just pack our things and go out because of the okay. fire alarm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pavel, we have so, a break. Right. And we'll be back when it's over. We have the break uh, in a minute, so I hope that uh, at the end of the yeah. break you will you will be back. Okay, thank you. I hope it's not a drill; it wasn't planned. So see you here. Okay, okay, we understand. So okay, uh, Ulink will show you uh, the list of all attached converters and uh, all attached. DALI ports and will display all the uh, addresses you assigned with the DIP switches. You select the particular one you want to configure. You can assign it a friendly name. And this is how the DALI bus appears in your configuration screen. You can see the name, you can see the address, and you can have uh, up to four. Uh, at the moment, there are zero devices, there are no devices connected, but Normally, you will see number of uh, DALI luminaries connected to this uh, to this port, and uh, this is all. This is basic uh, uh, configuration of the Ulink gateway. You have to do this once, and usually uh, we never return it or very rarely return to change something with that configuration. Ulink is now ready to to add the infrastructure devices. But I suggest the 10 minutes coffee break and after that we can start with the with adding uh, simpler and more more complicated infrastructure devices to the Ulink configuration. If you agree, uh, you don't need to disconnect. It is enough if you uh, switch off camera. Or most of you 
have no, do not use the camera, so it is even easier. Uh, I will switch my camera and microphone off and uh, let's meet at about uh, 3.15, okay? So thank you.
Okay, we're back in the live. Uh, turned out someone microwaved something that shouldn't be microwaved like ever. So, uh, <laughs> no, no real fire here. The smoke sensor worked just fine. And <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your, your 10 minutes coffee break because we most certainly did. Uh, so, yeah, I don't see any, uh, any questions more than a few jokes about the smoke sensors. So I guess uh, Mr. Skripczynski explained the first half just fine. I don't really know when uh, the break started, Mr. Maciej, when uh, shall we resume? Uh, yes, uh, we have agreed that we will meet again at 3.15, so in a 10 seconds we should. Okay, we should right. start so all that a well organized fire alarm. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, back to moderating the chat and Mr. Mace, please continue. Thank you. And let me let me add something to your answer. Uh, one of our uh, participant, uh, Peter. Okay. Ask, should Fibaro uh, Home Center be on a static uh, IP address? Of course, I agree. It is recommended. It is always good, but um, it does not mean that the home center should have the static configuration. It may be still in configured to DHCP, and sometimes it is easier to maintain the network when the DHCP uh, server, from the process on your router, uh, is configured um, to assign always the same address to the home center because Ulink has to find it uh, to, to, to be able to communicate. But what if yeah, some kind of problems appear and uh, Fibaro will wake up with a different IP network address than it has at the, at the moment where we were configuring uh, Ulink? Will your link lost, uh, lose the communication to the Fibaro? <laughs> Not exactly. Please remember that your link knows something about the home center. It knows its IP address, but it has been changed. Okay, but it knows its serial number, MAC address. Though, and uh, those are the parameters that rarely change. So if your link will lose communication with the Fibaro Home Center, it will try to uh, proactively try to find it on the network. And if it finds another uh, Fibaro Home Center of the same type, the same uh, MAC address, the same uh, admin password, it will rewrite its own configura configuration automatically because it believes that it finds the same home center it was attached to before the change of this IP address. So, so in terms of network configuration, Ulink, it is not an unusual, unusual device. It do even more. So, okay, uh, let me return to the uh, configuration, Ulink configuration. We will observe uh, the procedure of adding Mm, the free infrastructure devices, Modbus RTU example, TCP, mm, uh, LRMO com complicated device, and uh, example of DALI uh, Luminar. So mm, it starts with uh, uh, devices, many navigator devices, uh, and templates. You already know what we call the template and um, uh, Ulink has the list of uh, supported templates because it downloads it from the uh, uCloud, our uCloud network database. Um, there may be a long list of those uh, templates, I hope soon. So it is better to filter the list with the manufacturer or category or uh, the best, um, the model, device model uh, of the device you would like to um, to add support to. Then we have to create an instance. So we use that template to create one or more particular 
particular uh, instances, real physical instances of this of this uh, template in a reality. I've chosen a simple matter of electrical uh, parameters. It, it measures the voltage, current, uh, the power, and the energy consumption. This is very small. It's one TE, like like a standard circuit breaker. So we, we use it very often in our Modbus installations. So let's try to create the instance of the device. Uh, there may be more types of uh, similar devices um, within the template definition, so you have to choose one. In, in this case, it is the only one, so we click it. You have to choose uh, to select the appropriate protocol, because some devices are able to support more than one protocol. And you, will, you will be given the list of them. We select Modbus RTU in this example. Mm, there is a place where you have to enter the communication parameters, but we start with presenting the default set of the uh, parameters mm, for this particular device. Fortunately, all the parameters match the set of parameters we, mm, uh, we assign to the internal built-in RS485 port of Ulink. So Ulink immediately uh, has found the suitable bus. But Ulink knows uh, the parameter list of every bus installed, every uh, serial port installed. So it will not allow you to connect the um, device with different set of parameters to, to the bus. You have to enter the par parameters appropriate for the available bus or if it does not match, you can uncheck the, the configuration and um, change it appropriately. For example, you can change the speed uh, of uh, transmission, but please remember that you have to do exactly the same change in the configuration of the device. I don't know, maybe with dip switches, maybe with jumpers, maybe on the on the screen, uh, LCD screen, if it is a wise smart device. Somehow you have to uh, force the uh, infrastructure device uh, to configure the same communication parameters as, as you choose for the, the internal bus of Unique. If if it agrees, if Ulink um, let you assign um, Ulink found the appropriate uh, data bus with the appropriate parameters, uh, the last thing you have to change is the uh, slave ID, Modbus slave ID of the device, because you can have many devices connected, for example, a several. Uh, air conditioners and each one should be given a unique uh, unique slave ID. Please avoid leaving devices with a um, slave ID equal to one because it is factor defaults for many many other many many um, uh, real devices. Um, if you successfully attach such device, please change that slave ID to, to two, three or something like that and leave the address one unoccupied. Because if you, at any time in the future, you have to connect another device, it probably will be configured at factory with a slave ID one. And uh, if it is, if the address is used by some other devices, it will be a conflict. You lose communication to this uh, old device and you will not see the new one. If this address is empty, this, this uh, address is not used, it will be occupied by the new device and you can change it immediately. Usually you can change it even remotely um, to the different um, slave ID, keeping this first one um, unoccupied. Uh, of course, you have to you have to assign a name to the device to that matter, and you have to assign it to to one of your room. There's a switchboard, maybe it is better, but um, just for for 
the short presentation, I will assign all the devices to the default default room. And uh, when I finished, when I saved, uh, in the next second, you should see the small panel with the parameters data uh, uh, read from the device. It should take a second uh, to first to appear uh, first readings on the display. You you can also check the status with the icon and the, the and the description of the device status. It should be online, normal, idle, something like that. It it is it can be different for different uh, devices or, or templates. So look at it. It if it looks normally, two hundred thirty volts, small small power, uh, you can be sure that the matter is working and uh, replace to the queries from your link. <clears throat> uh, scrolling the, the list uh, a little bit down, you, you have the place where you can um, edit the communication protocol. Um, and um, this is the first place uh, we examine if something goes wrong. If you cannot see the the display, there are no values read from the matter. Um, you have to check, of course, you have to check cables, but it is 10% of the cases. In 90% percent of the um, uh, cases, the source of the problem is the um, parameters mismatch. There are different uh, communication parameters set by the Ulink side and different on the device side. Again, it can be dip switches, jumpers, or or uh, many display uh, displayed on the device. You have to check every particular parameter must match. So it is 80%, and if you uh, find it, it should work. If not, maybe a line, maybe one or device is is uh, working improperly but in many cases it is enough to find it uh, to, to to check it okay if you need to test uh, to change parameters and test does it help or not you can um, increase the frequency you link normally reads the matter once per 10 minutes it is quite enough if you if you are interested in, in, in a stable installation, but for test, it may be too long to wait 10 minutes uh, for a change. You can set it uh, even to, to one second. Uh, it would not be good to, to, to go to milliseconds because most of the manufacturers uh, limits the frequency. The second is safe, but please don't don't leave it uh, after your test because the communications is very slow. And uh, if you uh, force your device to, to uh, repeat, replay every second to the inquiries from you link, you may saturate your uh, serial bus, so uh, minutes or 10 or minutes are usually quite enough, especially if you have more than one device. Uh, okay, and you can also notice that there is a time of the last successful reading, so it is also helpful when uh, you link uh, received the proper reply uh, the last proper reply, reply from the device. Please look, uh, we also have uh, some icons. We call them uh, status icon. We recognize some um, uh, characteristic uh, specific states the device uh, can be in. Uh, usually your device is in normal online standby state. It can be um, called in, in a many different many different uh, ways and uh, the, the, uh, it is connected with a status ID zero. There may, may be higher levels, uh, higher um, states, but there are also negative. The minus one is obligatory. It means that the device is offline. 
we don't know. We have no communication with the guys, so we don't don't know in what really state it is. Um, we have to find the um, communication problem uh, with that device. Maybe uh, the device reports uh, a failure or an error or something like that. So it is uh, easily visible on the um, shape and color of the icon. It is also presented at the home center side. So the end user has immediate knowledge about uh, the state of the um, the uh, infrastructure device. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in the main menu, uh, the new device appears as an icon at state, and you can, of course, click the wrench to enter the communication. Now this is the time to integrate it with the Fibra Home Center. If it is up and running, you have the diagnostic tool to quickly check uh, does it respond properly or not? If everything is okay, you can import it, import the device to the home center with one single click. It takes a second to import the device. And please observe the home center uh, has assigned device ID 100. 87 I can see now and, uh, to the to the, the device uh, it will be useful for us in a moment I will return to it so at the moment the device should be created let's look at the home center screen yes uh, it appears as an icon and a name of the device um, in the uh, home center free interface and uh, if you click uh, expand it this is the matter and these are uh, the readings. The same uh, we observed a minute ago at the Ulink site. So uh, the device is fully integrated and uh, Ulink passes all the information read from the device to the home center. And this is how uh, Modbus TCP device can be added to the Ulink configuration. Another example, uh, it is uh, it is even easier, as you can see, more elasticity. So device is more complicated. Um, the um, template of this device is not ready yet. It is not in the database. I'm just in the middle of the process of creating it, so I can find it in my templates. The old templates are templates downloaded from the ser server, but if I am template developer, my uh, templates, the templates I've uh, built can be found in my templates tab. So um, I choose a heat pump and uh, in a, uh, in a uh, configuration parameters, I, I can create instance even if the uh, template is not ready, just to test, just to begin to test the communication, test the uh, correctness of the um, configuration of the template, I, I, I can start the instance of the physical um, uh, heat pump. Uh, the template is appropriate for eight different models of heat pump, so I have to choose the one I, I am connected to in, in reality. Of course, I have to uh, tell Yulink the IP address of the uh, of the communication interface uh, installed in the heat pump. Um, the TCP port usually is uh, 502 and a standard uh, well-known port, TCP port. And of course, uh, slave ID, usually it is one because, uh, because uh, different uh, devices probably will have different uh, IP addresses. So this is okay, we accept it. Now there's something new I would like to show you. The uh, template asks for global variable. Uh, it means that the designer of the template um, created the global variable and ask for uh, applying it some value which will be used in some some calculations uh, yes the heat pump measures the um, current consumptions uh, of the three phases uh, of the whole building 
it is used to, um, the heat pump uses it to decide whether it uh, is allowed to turn additional inertial uh, heaters or not. Uh, it should not exceed the available level of, of uh, power consumption. Um, so the pump, the heat pump measures the current, but does not inform us about the uh, voltage in the network. So um, if the template developer would like to use that information to calculate the power, he has to ask about the network voltage. And if you, as an installer, provide that value to the, to the template, uh, you will see, I will show you that it is used to calculate the power your building, not your heat pump, your building currently consumes. Of course, as usually, you have seen it many times before, before you assign the name, you assigned the device to some, some room, and after a second, you should see the first readings from the heat pump. Uh, and there are many of them, more than in the simple uh, device from the previous example. Sometimes mm, it is uh, so complex that you need to download the manual and read it to better understand the readings. We always impl uh, include the link to the documentation, the factory, the manufacturer do do uh, documentation of the uh, device within the template. Uh, so let me scroll the, the list of readouts down. Mm, that model of heat pump offers 96 different parameters, different data I items. So I've selected uh, just 18, only 18 from them, <laughs> but it still does not fin fit uh, one screen. But please look at the closer. Uh, some of the parameters can be changed. Mm, uh, we create template with a uh, label. It, it reads the value of the parameter uh, together with, with uh, two, for example, two buttons uh, for in, increase, decrease the value of the parameter. Um, in the reality, changing the RCU offset up or down decreases or increases the temperature in the building by one uh, uh, Celsius degree. Uh, so this is a real uh, control regulations of the temperature in the building. At the bottom of the list, uh, you will find an alarm code. Normally it is zero. Uh, if it is greater than zero, it indicates an error, a fault. Uh, the heat pump uh, uses two free uh, digits uh, code to inform that something went wrong. If you provide this code to your service, uh, manufacturer service technician, uh, maybe he will be well equipped to make his first visit effective. Normally, uh, the end user have no tools to to read that code, so. Um, the technician will, if you call the technician, he will visit you. He will check the, the code of alarm, probably returns to, and uh, next week he will visit you with the proper uh, replacement part because he didn't know what really happened. So it is very valuable information. Of course, at the home center side, you, you receive the same information as a global variable, so you can create a scene or um, SMS or notification, or you can even send an email with the code directly to the uh, manufacturer's service. The list of the uh, heat pump status icons is also longer. Usually, all the summer, the, the heat pump usually remains in the idle state. Sometimes it produces the domestic hot water, but normally it is idle. Uh, in uh, winter, autumn, uh, it will start the compressor and uh, heats the house using uh, water um, floor heating. Only. But if uh, it has a large inertia, it is cheap, but has an inertia. If you need quickly uh, a large amount of hot water, the pump will uh, will turn the immersion heater uh, on 
it can be uh, uh, six or nine kilowatts in, in this particular case, <laughs> this large heater. And and uh, I would like to know that it it is turned on. It does the job very quickly, but it's a significant uh, consumption of, of uh, electrical energy. So now it is time to add the heat pump to home center. Uh, uh, it was given, uh, again, it takes a second or two. The home center has given device ID 184. I will show you that it may be meaningful because if you for example, if you added uh, several devices to one room, not to several rooms, but to one room, uh, there your uh, device ID will help you identify which one you are currently configuring um, because they are so similar. There is also a place where you can remove the um, infrastructure device from a home center should it become unnecessary, you, it is better than you do this from the Euling um, perspective, because uh, there are many object, objects Euling uh, imported, brought to the home center, and it is better that it uh, clean them all uh, automatically. Uh, this is how it looks at the home center free site. This is the home center uh, kit pump icon and all the readings and again you have the push buttons buttons to control uh, the temperature in the whole building like you have the remote controller to your uh, to your heat pump but this is the same philosophy as uh, all other <clears throat> fibaro devices so you have a single well known a tool for our end users to control their own house. The same simple tools are used to turn light and uh, increase the temperature. Uh, please take a look at the list of the global variables uh, at the home center site. Uh, all of them, uh, the name of them, the variables begins with EU and 184 this is the device id this is what we uh, this is an example where we are interested in this device id because the list of the variables uh, brought to the home center by Euling is very long so this is why it is better to entrust removal of that device from the uh, home center to Euling. so it will clean all the objects Otherwise, you have to uh, delete uh, quick up, uh, delete uh, several icons, delete uh, the almost 20 uh, variables. It is better to leave it to, to Yoming. And the last example is the very short example is the DALI luminaires. It does not need mm, templates, does not require templates. The uh, DALI communication is standardized, so it is enough to select the um, communication port, DALI port. We, we have one attached, one of four available here. Um, and if you choose the, uh, the bus, you can scan it, but probably you will not have to because uh, your link scans it automatically in the background. Maybe you will have to rescan the bus if uh, there were some changes in the DALI luminaires configuration a couple of minutes ago. So you may be not aware of the changes. You force the scan. It takes uh, from a couple of seconds to, to, to one or two minutes. If It depends on the number of, of uh, light sources attached to the particular DALI bus. And when it is ready, you will be given a list of the DALI luminaires found on the network. You can on, always check quickly, turn on, turn off, and look at which, uh, which uh, light circuit um, uh, has been worked up, uh, which is, um, is it, uh, is it consistent with the, with the project? Because you, you should have a list of, uh, 
DALI addresses, list of room as a part of your design. If everything is uh, correct, you have to add these devices to ULink first. You click the uh, add this device to add the luminaire. Then, as you probably expected, you can assign a name. You have to select the room where this particular uh, light circuit is uh, installed. Uh, please answer is it dimmable or not, and you you can save the configuration of this of this particular um, particular uh, source of light. <clears throat> uh, you can see that also DALI groups were recognized by Yulin during the scan. The devices with DALI address 0, 1 and 2, so the first three or four found, belong to uh, one group. It was configured by DALI installer at the, at the beginning. You can check it, turn, turn on, turn off all the luminaires uh, assigned to this group. And if, if it's what you expected, you add this group, you assign the name and assign to the uh, appropriate room. Mm, every DALI luminaire can be also um, a member of a scene. There may be 16 DALI groups and 16 DALI scenes were the list of available luminaires with the uh, target uh, luminosity is remembered and it is enough to activate one of the defined scenes to have all the luminars lit with the remembered uh, value. Uh, and you can create, a, uh, when you uh, check this, you will create a scene controller in one of the home center uh, rooms. You only have to assign an MA and save it. So this is how the group of DALI lights appears on the main U-Link uh, screen. You can click the icon, single or group, uh, to turn it on and off immediately, just, just to check. Um, you can also enter the communication, uh, configuration of every particular light or group and uh, look, you have the slider, you can change the uh, slider to, to have a different lumo luminosity. You have also buttons to turn on, off, or to toggle the, the state of the light. Uh, exactly the same control can be uh, used in case of groups of DALI lights. And it is also very simple to uh, order uh, to run DALI scenes, you only need to remember the, the number of the scene. So if everything is uh, correct, you can uh, import, you, you can integrate uh, DALI luminaires with the uh, Fibro Home Center. That is a well-known procedure you have seen it before, nothing, nothing different. It also takes a second to uh, import the light. And you can see the group of uh, DALI, uh, the, the, the three individual DALI uh, sources of light, red, green, blue. Is, yes, it is really a, a, a RGB uh, strip. And the group of them and the scene controller. This time I've used UB small uh, controller for some reason, and this is how it looks, at the, how it appears on the uh, smartphone. You can change the level, turn it off and on from the smartphone, from the scenes, from every possible interface. You can also control the, the, the DALI scenes in that way. And what is the most important? That set the UB and the U-Link devices with the power of Fibro block scenes and Lua scenes, it makes it the cheapest programmable DALI controller on the market, according to what our installers uh, uh, say. Uh, comparing to, to products uh, costing thousands of euro or more, 
you can build competitive dolly installation for even large or house large buildings not only residential uh, with the smaller um, cheaper um, uh, tools than than your competitors do so okay uh, this was the example of uh, device infrastructure let me summarize what this communication um, uh, look at means for from the point of from the home center point of view uh, uh, there's no programming skills required everything is imported ready to use both for quick apps and and uh, scenes and uh, other uh, we use FIBA REST API to import quick apps to our devices because it works with uh, also with Home Center 2 and Home Center Lite, the old one, Lite. That one lacking the uh, Lua uh, programming skill uh, abilities. We bring icons, global variables, everything which is necessary to, to control those objects from the point of view on the FIBA Home Center. Uh, at the end user side, uh, the devices we brought appear in the form of the remote controllers, something like that. This is the weather station, this is the uh, conditioner, uh, some multimedia like a network radio or beam projector, uh, simple, uh, simple remote control. Um, the icon status has a special meaning, and I would like to Mm, to ask you for some kind of agreement. Mm, the mm, green background means that this uh, states must be defined in templates. Zero uh, means it is a normal state, standby, idle, something like that. Every device has such a state. Minus one, you, you already have heard, it is a problem with communication between Ulink and this device. We don't know in what state the device uh, is now. We have no connection to it, so its status is unknown for now, for us. Maybe, maybe it is switched off. Maybe the cable. We know nothing. Um, but uh, the device, the dev infrastructure device, can report um, some kind of alarm or error code. We display the. Um, uh, the the icon of the device with the red uh, uh, thunder, and it is uh, uh, it is indication that something wrong with the device. Some of the devices can report uh, that they need uh, attention, that need maintenance. For example, replacing the uh, filter. It is not an error. It is not a fault. But uh, they remind that something needs to be changed. Maybe the service and technician uh, has to replace the filter. And of course, there are some positive states. states uh, for example, mm, uh, the fan may be uh, switched off or uh, switched to first, second, or third um, uh, level of speed. Uh, and we can create many positive states. We can create those two negative. Those green states are obligatory. Uh, you as an user or author or the creator of the template uh, should have to provide the service for these two states. And the in information about the state is as exchanged between Ulink and Home Center in the asynchronous way. So only when the change is actually taking place. So the FIBAR Home Center does not need to periodic, periodically poll uh, Ulink or its devices. And uh, just at the end, uh, a couple of words about security about the protection protection mechanism uh, in in Ulink. Uh, Ulink as you already know Ulink will create automatically a backup of its configuration whenever it detects the configuration changes it checks it once per hour and if there is a change you don't need to remember Ulink will backup it automatically to the local primary micro SD memory card. Of course, if, if the internet connection is available at the moment, it will uh, send the same 
backup in an encrypted form to our, our cloud service. So even if the card is destroyed for some reason, you will be able to, to uh, download the backup for a particular device. Uh, uh, you will notice that one of the USB uh, ports is equipped by factory with the external USB card reader, and it is a small micro SD card, um, a secondary card. Uh, every night, um, uh, Ulink makes a copy, makes an exact clone of the primary card to the secondary one. Uh, so, in case of trouble, you can replace them. If you power U link, power up the U link, it takes about a minute, minute to start up. You should see some mes messages on uh, all uh, LED display like initialization, finally the menu. If it does not appear in a minute or two, it may be a problem with the primary card. Uh, also, um, if you have physical access to the device, you can observe the um, status of the um, transmit and receive uh, blue and yellow uh, LEDs on the um, on the U link. If they should uh, be turned off, if they still lit after 20 seconds, it may appear that the um, primary card, micro SD card, has a problem. So you can uh, safely replace that secondary card, place it uh, in that main uh, card reader inside the U-Link, and if it helps, it was really the problem, you can buy at every shop, you can buy at a good quality 60, uh, 16 gigabits uh, micro SD card and, and you, you are safe again. If you uh, need uh, assistance from our site, uh, you will find uh, in the last uh, many item in help, uh, you will find the remote assistance session. If you click it, uh, then you open the encrypted SSH tunnel to our server. It is for, for us, it is enough if you send us for example, with an email, you send us the session number and we are able to connect from our site to your your link and check maybe correct it configuration and something like that. If you has if you have to send us um, any kind of information uh, about a communication problem or you have found an error in, in translation or anything else, you can use this uh, form to send us an email and we will try to quickly report. So um, for those of you who will be interested in creating your own templates, we plan a separate uh, conference, separate training. Uh, let me just uh, take, you, take you just a minute to, uh, to um, inform you about the problems which we can uh, uh, observe uh, creating um, creating templates. Um, the information we um, we need to create templates uh, rarely includes in the standard operating instructions or manuals. We need so-called Modbus register map because the device can have many different data and it is only the fantasy, the imagination of the uh, constructor of this uh, device, in which which memory register at which addresses the particular pieces of information is located. So we, um, for us, there are numbers and it may, it may mean everything. So we need the register map. Sometimes it's a separate document, sometimes it is a problem. Uh, because not all manufacturers publish uh, the register maps on their information. So the, the documentation, the manufacturers' the documentation sometimes contains traps. Uh, for example, they start um, counting the memory register uh, from one, other one, uh, others uh, start from zero. So even if you prepare your template carefully, it may not work or read strange information, please change. Is it a problem? No, unless you have the uh, physical 
access to the device, you simply change the uh, address of the first, you shift all the addresses by one, not from zero, but for one, and every, every readouts are, are now uh, uh, correct. So this is why the physical access to the device is also very important, as important as uh, manufacturing. How does uh, creating templates look like? How this graphical editor looks? It is uh, comparable to the uh, FIBAR or uh, block scenes. It is a number of uh, colorful blocks, boxes connected with a, with a line, some simple operations like adding, increasing, decreasing, uh, and this is the complete uh, uh, template for an industrial uh, PLC thermostat. So this is one of the simplest one. On the other hand, <laughs> what you see now is the complex template, 62 blocks. This is that heat pump we, uh, we installed today, uh, just a couple of minutes ago. But please don't be aware. If you look at I have minimized it to show the, the complexity of the whole um, template. But if you look closer, uh, there are easily recognizable groups of uh, blocks, and you define. You spend some time to define the first one, and then you can select all the blocks and copy and paste them several times, and simply change the address uh, if you need to uh, to uh, support more complex device. So this is uh, all you need to know about creating the. Uh, the um, templates. You can use templates uh, only by your own, but you can also publish them on the same database where we do this. Uh, I would like to invite you to the following site, ucloud.utonomy.com, where you can find the list of the uh, currently available templates together with the moderator rating we one of us uh, will have to moderate we have to check the uh, every template uh, before it is published and um, according to um, as as many ulink uh, uses this uh, this particular template you will find some uh, stars here uh, indicating is it popular is it useful uh, or not, How? what about its usability in practice? If you don't find, if you cannot find the appropriate uh, device you are looking for, please add it to our wish list. And we will try to, if, if there are more uh, people waiting for this uh, kind of device with this kind of template, we will start uh, from this most expected. Um, Maybe we would like to inform. Maybe it is better if you, for example, leave us your email, and when the when the uh, appropriate template is ready, you will be um, you will receive automatically uh, email informing. But need to uh, visit the site every day. Uh, to be informed that the template is ready. If you are, mm, uh, if you think that you can uh, build your own uh, templates and the device instances are uh, running properly at your site, you can register your account and you can publish your um, template because we provide attractive prizes for most active developers. Uh, Fibaro company has helped us and we can offer Fibaro modules or, or autonomy products for the most active developers. Uh, so um, the uh, rules are simple. If many Ulink uh, devices uses your templates and the diversity is large. So, uh, so probably the person who created uh, one template used in hundreds of installations may uh, earn comparable number of points to the person who created several 
templates, even if they're not so popular as the third one. So the, the diversity of the of the devices is what we try to fight against. Uh, again, I will. I, we have the pleasure to pleasure to invite you to our forum when you can always where you can uh, place your questions and uh, we'll be happy to answer if you have some questions now let me review uh... and we're back again mr Masi from the chat i have uh, one question from Jakub. if you could uh, take a quick look from 3 to um, 4 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yulin creates quick apps, yes. Mm. UB Home and uh, light versions have limitations of both. Mm. Question is, is all child devices of invisible Yulin master devices or all devices stands there for themselves? And every virtual device creates connection to your link. Yes, every uh, virtual device connects creation, but it is not open all the time. It is um, it is used on demand. But uh, you are right. Yes, all the instance consumes one uh, quick apps. So it is at the moment. It is up to you to remember how many for example if you have uh, 20 dali lights uh, grouped in in three groups it is better to bring only the groups to the home center site nothing valuable comes from uh, playing with particular single lights the the uh, controlling other groups is usually enough so sometimes very small Mm, UB Home can control to the huge number of mm, uh, lights because it sends uh, commands, just uh, one single command to one DALI light group, and it act, acts immediately. There's no delay between, mm, there's no chain <laughs> where you can see that the first lamp is already <clears throat> bright and another one are waking up. No all the luminaires will receive the single command and they will bring up in the in the same exactly in the same moment so yes you're right there is a limitation if you need more please take uh, home center free okay i hope that that exp that explained mr record the uh, mm -hmm. the question We'll be waiting for uh, for more questions for a few minutes now. I just want to remind you that there's a dedicated email that I've put on the chat some time ago and the uh, Utonomy forum when you can ask um, Utonomy directly about the product. And uh, while waiting, I just want to thank Mr. Machi again, once again. Thank you. <laughs> for the technical support because he does it just properly and uh, it's it's not every day that I can attend such uh, such webinars. So thank you again, Mr. Maci. Thank uh, you. Uh, oh, we have a question again, Mr. Jakub. Uh, if you could, Mr. Maci. Mm, let me scroll down. Uh, the question is: uh, Can you configure new DALI devices with your link to groups? Since not not at the moment. Let us usually. Um, done by the DALI installer who is equipped with uh, the software is usually free. The USB interface is about 100 euros or, or so. So they all have uh, appropriate tools. We think about extending the Uling functionality. Uh, and if if it is done, Uling will be able to scan and address the, the the assign the initial addresses for the DALI devices but uh, it is not the most important function of Uring and there are many other tools on the market that can be used please let's start with this what is unavailable on the market at the moment 
we offer you the tool to integrate it and if you find it useful we will uh, we will continue our work to to equip the ulink with even more uh, functions thank you for that and uh, i just want uh, to say because i can't stress this enough and the product is ingenious in its own way, but it will work only uh, fine if we all, well, mostly autonomy, but uh, sometimes probably with our help, upload the the templates. To be honest, so uh, once again, like Mr. Machi said, I strongly uh, I strongly agree with him that we <laughs> must all work together on the templates and uh, and just uh, remember to, to visit uCloud from time to time to maybe check if there are any more uh, templates that you need, to make requests for new templates, to, you know, like those one you need and like those one you used, because it's uh, it's super important. It's, it's just like a, it's like a joint, uh, joint project for us all to make the, uh, uh, make the device just uh, work properly on uh, as many devices as we need because we will do it in our own way in our own pace but it will take time to uh, just provide the support that is needed for every device there is uh, in the world and uh, getting your help and your uh, customer help your installers help everyone you need help to be everyone you know help it's it's really crucial here so uh, once again, uh, use uCloud because it's a uh, it's a good solution for for us and for you, also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I don't see any any more questions for now. Uh, also, okay, I got. Uh, can we borrow do something similar for Z-Wave templates? We receive quite a few requests for new device in the market without Fibaro template. Okay, I can't answer that now, uh, but I'll write down this and forward it to a proper person because there is some project that will cover this topic. Okay, got it. Um, yeah. Okay, I will answer you in Jacob uh, directly afterwards. Uh, so, Okay, uh, we will be ending in a few minutes time. As I said, this whole meeting was being recorded. So uh, probably tomorrow at 5 p.m. you'll receive the recording and a uh, quick reminder that the pre-order phase is still undergoing. So uh, if you weren't or not, and now are, uh, I, I don't know if able or uh, willing to order uh, the single piece of U-Link, U-Link Lite or DALI modules just follow the landing page that is uh, that is available at utonani.com slash Ulink Premier, I guess. Uh, the landing page you signed to the uh, to the session and fill out the pre-order form in order to get your one for the moderate super promotional price we're uh, offering, which for now was 230 for the Ulink Lite and 280 for the full Ulink device. Okay, uh, any last words from you, Mr. Maciej? I think. <laughs> yeah, we, many words, many words were spoken from your side, yeah, I guess. So, so much you? information from one day. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so I think we'll wrap it up. For now, uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, we'll be, I hope we'll be in touch. And once again, to uCloud, utonomy.com, and the pre-order form. And uh, let's keep in touch. Bye, all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. You. <clears throat>